The Bromans are doing well, but we knew that would happen early in this campaign. We're playing a Warhammer Fantasy Battles 6th edition campaign, and we're doing things a little different from the average gamer, as we do. We are using William Sylvester's excellent solo wargaming guide to help us manage a map-based campaign. In our last episode, well, actually the last two episodes, because... These battles can take a while. We fought a battle over here. This is the second battle that was fought. This was fought between the Broman army that we're calling Archangel and the ne Necromancer's army, which we're calling Julius. And, you know, it's a bit of a grind. Got to be honest with you, a bit of a slog. We had very different victory conditions than you typically find in a game of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Generally, games of Warhammer Fantasy Battles will last four to six turns, and you're trying to get your opponent knocked down to about 25% of their starting strength. But because we have an undead army fighting a delaying action, we wound up playing it out to the bitter end. Whichever side was able to fully eliminate the enemy would be in firm control of this campaign. And Fortunately for the Bromans, they were able to come out on top, but man, did they pay a high price. As we said last time, i flip back to my roster here, Force Archangel took a beating. Half of their knightly order were destroyed. They've only got six remaining, and until the 28th, now I should point out, that battle was fought on the 21st. Until the, wait, Archangel, 28th, that's not right. Injured guys are not available for two weeks. So it's not the 28th. It's three days past September, April, September. Let's see. Uh, January, February, March. It was only 30 days in April. So these guys will be available on April 5th, which is a very important date in everybody's calendar. That means that the next time Force Archangel fights, they're only going to have six of their knights, five of their swordsmen, tw uh, 24 spearmen, and nine archers. That is not nearly enough to take on the castle of the Necromancer, who, as we've talked about before, right now he's got 24 skeletons and 15 zombies, but he is in a castle. We're going to have to wait. Maybe. Maybe. What's the strategy going from here? Well, we're not sure. We've got a couple of things. Let me just set the stage, because we are running through... Let's see. This is the week of the... Well, this is the week of the 19th. This is when the battle was fought. So from the 19th to the 24th, we've, we figured out the weather, we figured out marching and everything, so we've done the 21st, then we have to pick up where we left off. Now on the 22nd, the Broman forces at that battle have to recover their dead, they've got to, you know, take a day, rest, meditate, relax, ready to go. On the 23rd, they'll be able to move to this barrow right here, and then the 24th is a Sunday, they take the day off. So the first thing Force Archangel is going to want to do on the 25th is bless, and that's why I put the flag there already, because I figured that part out. They're going to want to have their holy men bless this barrow, and that is going to eliminate it as a recruitment point for the undead. That's really about all we can do. I can point out that Force Desdemona, their strategy was to wait here. They now face a very difficult choice. Desdemona is an undead army, and they have to figure out, do we want to go fight a rematch against Force Cherub? Do we want to hang tight? Because we've only got two armies now. Force Bonquo, oh, I'm sorry, Desdemona hasn't seen any action yet. We've got two undead armies. Bonquo up here, Desdemona down here, and then we've got three Roman armies. Archangel, as we said, has been reduced to less than half of their effective strength. Force Cherub is located right here, and Force Seraph is down here. Now, Force Seraph, likewise, they are going to bless this. They, they were, well, if we come down here, I've made a couple of notes. 22nd, 23rd, they get to this barrel. The 24th, they have to rest. And on the 25th, Force Seraph is going to bless that barrel. So we're all already starting on the 26th here. The only guys ready to move on the 25th are Force Cherub. And I think... There's really no choice for Force Cherub. I think, even though they are reduced in strength, they started out with, you know, they, they started out with um, 10 Knights of the Lamb. No, they started out with 12 Knights of the Lamb. I think I meant for them to start with 10, and then I put 12 on the table. I don't know. Either way, my notes right now say that we've got eight effect, six effectives. 
Um, but they've got a whole lot of spears. They still have 34 spears. This is a pretty strong army. I think we need to throw Force Cherub at Force Desdemona. As I said, Desdemona is unbloodied. I mean, it's mostly skeletons, so, you know, I mean, like, they haven't fought yet unbloodied. Of course they're unbloodied. Skeletons don't have blood. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Well, I don't know. Is there blood in the marrow? I don't know. It doesn't matter. we got to figure out what the weather is like for the week starting on the 25th. We like to do it live. This is our weather chart. We're still in the month of March, at least for the first five days. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll the die five times. And if we roll a one or a two, we're going to move up a square. And on a three or four, we'll hold tight. And on a five or six, we'll move down. So on the 25th, so actually, I think we landed here on the 24th. So the 25th, we stay there. It's clear skies. On the 26th, we move down. So we go here. The 27th. We go down to here on the 28th, we hold, and on the 29th, we go back up to here, and on the 30th, we go back down to here. Now, that's not the end of the week. That's only five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. It's only six days. So on day seven, what we do is we slide over here, and we roll the dice again. The weather is improving, and go back up to here. So here we are on the 1st of April. The weather is getting even better, and I think that may be a key reason that the Broman Empire is doing so well in this campaign so far. They have not had to deal with the effects of bad weather. Bad weather would affect them more than the other guys because they have to deal with dragon cannons around. And the other guys needed time to summon armies. They needed time to recruit undead. If we had had four or five days of the Bromans not being able to march, they wouldn't be nearly as deep into the territory north of the, what do we call this, the Cork River? Yeah, the Cork River. So weather plays a big role in that. Kind of gutsy going in March, as you can see. We've got some fairly substantial. They were smart not to go in January. Very rare that you get clear skies in January, December. All right, but that's, so now we know what the situation is weather-wise, clear skies. The next thing we have to do is figure out what our special events are. And for random events, we go to this smorgasbord of smorgasbord. Did I say that right? I think I did. Cam Wargaming Campagans by Henry Hyde. This is a wonderful buffet of advice. Uh, some of it helpful, some of it not. And what's helpful for me might not be for you. It has a whole campaign management system in here called Paths to Glory. Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. I highly recommend you get a copy and look through it because there's some ideas. Even if you're not going to use the campaign it's, it, itself, I have a couple of issues with it, so I don't use the Paths to Glory campaign, but I do really like these campaign random events. You can print out a whole deck. I think if you go to the website, I don't even think you need to buy the book, and you can download and print out those campaign cards. Purple Druid, friend of the channel, he's done that, and it's been interesting to watch the results. So what we do, and I just by the by, I really like the odds on this table. There's a 50-50 chance that nothing happens. And if something happens, there is a 50-50 chance that it's a good thing or a bad thing. On the other hand, sometimes you get something that happens and because of the campaign situation, what happens is irrelevant. Oh, the rivers are high, but nobody's near a river, so it doesn't matter. So we're kind of dealing with Vegas odds, 50-50. You know what I'm saying? That they tilted a little bit in the direction of nothing happens, which is fine, but it works really well. So what we do is you roll the percentile dice, and we got to declare who we're rolling for. We roll for each force in the campaign. So in this case, we'll roll for undead first. We get a result of 80, which is a thing that happens. And according to this, all a new heir is born to the throne of your country, or a new popular leader is elected. All your troops gain a 10% bonus in movement and better from a plus one in any morale test in any encounter. All right. So what that means is that the moon is right this week. And I got to write this down because essentially what this does, I'm going to write it down on the, on the undead side, okay? Um, for the week, I thought I had a, you know, the one of the hardest parts of campaign management is information management. And unfortunately, just like one legal pad ain't doing it. So here we go. Uh, I didn't know anything I wrote down. We had forest fires. We had clear skies. So for the week of the 25th, the undead have the moon is right. That's what we're going to call it. And normally in Warhammer 40K, so there are 40K, <laughs> fantasy battles. Somebody's been spending too much time screaming about female space marines on Twitter. I'm not pointing any fingers, just the thumb at the guy that's doing it. All right, so as I was saying, in Warhammer, when your undead forces lose a combat. They don't take a morale check. Instead, 
however much they lost the combat by, they lose that number of troops again. So if you if you lose the combat by a score of like six, you take off six more troops. So what we're going to do is we're going to say when they lose, we're going to manage the combat the way we always do. The only real difference is that when they lose a combat, they lose one less guy than they ordinarily would. In other words, we're not going to give them plus one to every combat. We're just going to say that their losses are reduced because the skeletons are just that little bit stronger than they otherwise would be. And that is a great little addition to the campaign that I probably would never have come up with on my own. That's the beautiful part about this chart is that it gives you these general guidelines and you can apply them however you want. I know there's a bump. It's a morale boost for guys that don't have morale. We can find a way to make it work. Rolling for the Bromans now, we get a 41 and I believe a 41 is no effect. So nothing, they, you know, the, the, the good guys had a little bit of a bump last turn. This time, no go. Oh, and then they get a plus. Does that say they get a plus? They get a bonus to movement uh, for the next turn and benefit affects the active side. Okay. So, yeah, we got to remember that they're 10% faster this turn. I, you know, I'm actually not 10% on a map this size isn't that much. They move in, a quarter of an inch is five miles. So instead of moving a quarter of an inch, they're going to move a quarter of an inch plus 10. They're going to move 0.275. Oh, my, I forget it. I think the boost to when they lose a combat is going to be enough because their forces are, are already so sticky. They're all power pits. I guess it'd be a great little addition. The next thing, excuse me, the next thing that we need to look at here is how our armies move. And Mr. Sylvester says, what you should do is come up with three strategies for the team to follow. You know, I'm not going to do that as a solo war gamer. Instead, I'm going to do something a little bit different. We have to decide, so we, like I said, we've got three attacking forces. Boom, boom, boom. And we've only got two defenders, one of whom is way out here. And I guess it's important to point out that Force Bonquo recruited on the 24th. So they're actually stronger now than they were. This Barrow is not available to recruit until the 25th, meaning Desdemona will spend the first day of the week recruiting. And we're going to give them, you know what, because if the moon is right. When we recruit, we're going to give them an extra plus one to their figure. So normally what happens is when an undead army is in a barrel, and this I did write down somewhere, they roll a 2D... Uh, yeah, it's not on this one. They roll... There is a one in six chance that they summon ten gr tomb guards. All right, we didn't get that. So that means that we are going to summon ten... Plus 10, oh, plus a D10. This time it's going to be 11 plus a D10. Or 10 plus a D10 plus one for the morale boost. So on the 25th, Force Desdemona is going to recruit 18 more skeletons. That gives them a total of 45 skeletons. Now, Force Desdemona is an interesting one. You've got a thrall. Dane Poalton is leading them. They also have two banshees. Here's a question. Do we want to throw our see how see our um, wolves and bats travel way faster? We could send the wolves and bats down to reinforce. I don't think we will though. Like I was saying before, I got interrupted by the fact that we have a little bit of a summoning going on here. Uh, the the force Banco now faces a choice: Do they want to go back to Wiggly Hill and recruit? And then come around here and recruit more zombies and then come down to relieve Castle Gallagher. That's one option. Or Force Desdemona, okay, is going to hold. They know Force Cherub is coming to get him. So does Banquo zip around and then relieve the siege? Or do they come down here to take on Cherub and Seraph before they can even get there? Because we know what Seraph is going to do, right? They're, they're clearly going to start out on the 25th by marching up to this grave site and blessing it. And how long does that take, I ask, hear you ask? Well, since they're traveling on good roads, they travel three quarters of an inch a day. So that's going to be traveling the 25th. On the 26th, they'll get here. On the 27th, they will knock it out. And then on the 28th, they're going to start marching. So they can either go this way on a 1, 2, 3, or this way on a 4, 5, 6. They're going to go this way. So on the 28th and 29th, this is where they will be on the 29th. 
And then we still have the 30th and the 31st. But I'm going to pause right there. This is where Seraph is on the 29th. And we'll draw a little arrow to show which way that army is going. Because, as I said, Force Archangel, they spend the 25th. And then, I don't know, what do we do with Force Archangel? Should we go start to lay siege to Castle Gallagher, or do we just wait here? Or do we march down and try to join Force Seraph? That's another option. We can unite those two armies and make one big army. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll on a 1-2-3, we're going to go to Castle Gallagher and start the siege. How are we going to do the siege? I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead, to be honest with you. But I do know that there is lots of really good advice in wargaming campaigns. And what does it mean to start a siege? I, I'm not sure yet. Let's let's stick a pin in that. We'll come back to it. So on a one, two, three, that's what happens. Hey, look how easy that is. Four, five, six. Thank you, Fates, for making it so I don't have to think about that. As I said, 25, uh, 26, 27. And then because this is already blessed, we can just say, all right, well, that's a quarter of an inch. So they have a, that's the 28th. The 28th puts them there, and on the 29th, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to bring Seraph and Archangel are going to be right here on the 29th. So they have now united their forces, which may be awkward for me because I only I might not have enough horses to figure that out. So it, it drags Seraph back a little bit, but Archangel and Seraph are together. There you go. Now the question is, what did Desdemona... Oh, wait a minute. I might be getting too far ahead of myself here. Does Desdemona want to march... To, well, we know they recruited on the 25th. So on the 26th, Force Cherub here, they're on the attack. They're going to be here on the 26th. So I think... Well, on the 25th, they move to there. And I think what happens is we have a battle between Desdemona and Cherub on the 26th. 25, yeah. And Cherub is going to be attacking Desdemona. So Desdemona is just summoned up an extra... 18 zombies, and then boom, Cherub arrives. We have a barrel mound that they're going to be attacking. The last thing we have to figure out is what is Banquo going to do, at least on the before we zoom in to this battle site. What is Banquo going to do? On a 1, 2, 3, they race down this direction. On a 4, 5, 6, we'll swing them around to relieve the siege with a huge relieving force. 1, 2, 3, they're going to get stuck in, and they may wind up coming down to... They may wind up relieving that force as well. So, as I said... They are going to be able to, let's see, they summon on the 24th. So on the 25th, actually, they're going to be able to 25, 26th. Um, and on the 27th, they're going to be just short. So I'm going to put a little flag right here to remind me that Force Bonquo is coming in. And that's going to be a problem for Force Cherub. Because they're going to fight a battle on the 26th. And they're going to have the 27th to rest, and then on the 28th, they're going to get hammered by Force Banquo, which is a big force. This is going to be the rematch, but now Cherub is going to be smarting from getting thumped by Force Desdemona. Alternatively, Desdemona might be able to weather this, and this, this Cherubic storm, Cherubic storm, and slide down to delay Force Archangel. That's where we're at. But we got to figure out what this what this battlefield is going to look like. We know there's going to be a barrel mound in the center, so that makes that part a little easy. Here is what our battlefield is going to look like. Now, we do know that there's a road that approaches a barrow. We're going to use cards to randomize our terrain. And if we look at this map one more time, and what do we see? We see that we've got a crossroads at this barrow. Now, where the barrow is in respect to the crossroads, I'm not sure. We're going to lay out... 16 cards. Every spade will be a terrain piece. And we can just lay them out like this. Now, which terrain piece? That's up to the random chart here. Spades are where we're at. So we have a nine of spades up here, a four, a three, oh, and a queen here. There is a handy little chart. Now we're going to turn our attention back to the Solo Wargaming Guide. And he's got recommendations for when you have a hex-based campaign. Oh, see how the crossroads and the bridge, is this what your table look like? He says every black card will be a terrain item. Yeah, you don't need that much terrain for a Warhammer Fantasy Battles. 
That's why we only do the spades instead of the black cards. So as you can see, we've got a 9, 4, and queen running in that direction. And according to this chart, that means we're going to have a light woods. We're going to have grasslands. And let's see. Nine, and what is the 9? So the 4 is heavy woods. We've got heavy woods, light woods, grasslands. And this joker looks like a great place for a barrel mound. That translates into light woods, heavy woods, the barrow is right here, and grasslands. That means that our terrain is essentially dividing the table into a third of, on this side and uh, two-thirds on this side that are kind of wide open with some really rough ground dividing those two. The issue is going to be, there's a couple of things that we already know. The undead are defending the barrow. One thing we don't know, well, we do know that the... Bromans are coming up the road, and I sketched in a couple of roads, but on retrospect, looking at the, how this terrain is set up, I think it might make a lot more sense to decide, well, the, the, since the Bromans are coming up this road in this direction, why don't we decide to throw a die? On a one or a two, the road is going to be on this side of our divide, and on a four, five, or six, it'll be over here on the right side. All right, so four, five, or six, the road is going to be somewhere over here. And remember that the road doesn't do you any good in Warhammer Fantasy Battles. It's just decorative. So we know the road is going to come on something like this. And I guess it probably comes through here. And maybe that crossroad is down here just off the table. So forget, forget this road. This road is dumb. We don't like that road. What that means is the Bromans are going to have to come onto the table in this area, which the good news for them is with the undead defending the barrow and why don't we say that the deployment zone will be within six inches of the barrow for the undead now we've got a battle set up the bromans are on the attack so they're going to have the initiative this time around but we'll have to see what that means when it comes to force cherub versus force desdemona because as i said desdemona's got a couple of banshees so those banshees ignore terrain they may deploy over here and they may decide to come around and start mucking up the backfield. For the Bromans, let's see what they've got. Force Cherub has... This is a pretty big one. As I said, Captain Legan, wizard, our, our wizard named McGram. We've got a great cannon, and that great cannon will have to come on on the road. We've got uh, six Knights of the Lamb. Here's our effective. They've only got 14 spear in one unit and 20 spear in the other. Uh, they do have a banner and a leader and champion in both of those units, which I think that translates to, for Force Desdemona with 45 skeletons, I think we'll have a unit of 20 and a unit of 25, and both of those will have banner, champion, musician. Oh, the funny thing is musicians don't do you much good in... <laughs> musicians are good for rallying in Warhammer Fantasy Battles, and you don't have to worry about rallying um, skeletons. But hey, it came with a pack. They're great figures. They look fun. So we're going to put them in there anyway. Uh, for the Bromans, the musician will do some good. Uh, uh, except I don't actually have any musicians. All I have is banners and champions for the Force of Terror. But I, I don't have the figures. So that's part of what we do here with the campaigns is you fit the game to fit your collection. And while you're doing that, you build your collection to fit the games. Now we know what our next battle is going to be. And this battle is going to occur on, as we said, but I forgot. That battle is going to happen on March 26th. And then another battle is likely to happen on the 28th. Or we'll have a big epic confrontation. If, if Desdemona pulls this out, Bonquo will show up. And they'll have time to organize their forces. And it'll be a combined Bonquo Desdemona versus... Archangel Seraph. And I I don't know. That could be fun. But we got to play the 26th first to find out what happens next. Tune in for the next episode. I don't know when it'll happen, but you know, two days next week. Either way, we'll be here. Either way, I'm praying for you. <laughs>